So this is the tailstock on my machine. And if we move it, you can see there is a lot of slop in that tailstock. Seems like an obvious solution if we adjust the gib screws, we can get this trued up. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. This tailstock has two gib screws. That's two of the six total gib screws that are on this lathe. And down in that hole, you can see a hex head. So adjusting the gib screws should be as simple as putting an Allen wrench in and tightening it down. And hey, we just saw it move just there. So we put it in, tighten it down. And we still have some play, so definitely a little better. So we tighten it down a little more. We're getting there, but still some play, and it's kind of dragging. Go a little more. Okay, now we're locked up. So we back it out. Back it out. Anytime we back it out, we're getting a little bit of play. 15 years I've had this machine. And for 15 years, I have messed with adjusting the gib screws with just a basic Allen wrench. The problem is, I will never be able to get them adjusted properly because of the way this machine is set up. To get a better understanding of what's going on, let's take a look at the exploded view. Do you see it? There's the problem right there. Do you see it? I didn't see it either. 15 years, I didn't see it. The problem with this machine and how the gib screws is adjusted is you don't adjust them by using an Allen wrench. Let me show you what I mean. Let me put the Allen wrench in and pull this out. Basic set screw, you would think that would adjust your gibs. The problem is nothing has changed. This is now removed and it has the same amount of tension and the same amount of adjustment that it had before. That seems kind of weird. We look down the hole. Uh-oh. There's a slot that I can see. Let me stick a screwdriver down there and see what happens. Yep. Something's spinning. And look at that. We have a second screw. And that has been machined to fit into the drilled out spots on the gib and hold it into place. Clearly, the problem is two set screws. Well, now that we know it's a two set screw system, I should be able to adjust this. I should be able to put the set screw in that I just removed, get the gibs adjusted properly, and install the outer one as a keeper. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. When I install this in the hole and get it adjusted, and then we install this and it comes up against it, as I tighten this one down, it spins this one. And when I'm backing it out, if I loosen this one up just a little bit, it loosens this one up before it stops making contact. That is why I was able to get some adjustment by turning the outside one, but was never able to get it to work exactly the way that I wanted it to. I could never get the tight tolerances that I wanted. On my main carriage, I was able to use the lathe. It cut pretty well. It cut fairly accurately. But if I went to lock the carriage and watched what happened on the DRO, as I locked the carriage, the DRO would show movement of anywhere between five ten thousandths and one one thousandth of an inch. And that never seemed right. It was something that I learned to live with. In fact, it was something that I learned to anticipate. I would go under that amount, expecting it to move when I locked it down. Turns out, all six gib screws on this machine are set up the same way and it's the gib screw adjustment that is causing all my problems but a much better option is this right here this is just an m8 bolt with a jam nut and a head that was machined so that it fits into the pockets on the gib this allows me to install it into the gib screw locations on the machine adjust it from the outside one single stud and then lock it down with 
the jam nut. And that is a far superior setup. I was able to replace all the Gibbs screws on this machine and get everything dialed in in 15 minutes. And now when I lock down my carriage, I might get the slightest bit of movement, say one ten thousandth of an inch. But that's far better than one one thousandth. So if you have an import machine and you've been fighting with Gibbs screw adjustment, you may want to look, you may want to see if it is a two set screw system. If it is, it's completely stupid and it doesn't take a whole lot of time, energy or money to replace it with something like this. I have no clue why they did this from the factory. I can't even imagine it being that much of a cost saving thing because two set screws can't be that much cheaper than one set screw and a jam nut. So now adjusting my Gibbs screws is a piece of cake. Stick the Allen wrench in, pull it down till I have the right amount of tension, do it on the other one. And then we simply use the jam nut to lock it into place. And now there's no wiggle and it slides beautifully. We have properly adjusted the Gibbs screws and it only took a matter of seconds. These are M8 socket head cap screws, 50 millimeters long. And that's what I used for both the tail stock and the carriage. So we've got one here, one here. I actually ended up replacing the set screw here also with an M8 bolt. It's an M8 16 because there is a pin that floats inside. So what's nice about that is since it takes such a large Allen wrench, I can stick an Allen wrench in it and lock it down and then leave the Allen wrench there, kind of like a handle for tightening and loosening the carriage. So I go ahead, I make the cut, I make the pass, and then we can go ahead and loosen it back up. These were also M8 by 50 socket head cap screws. I had to cut them down a little further than the ones on the tail stock because there's less space here. And then down below here, you can see one of the other Gibbs screws. And that required a 100 millimeter M8 socket head cap screw. This is one of the simplest upgrades I've made to this machine. And yet it's also one of the best upgrades I've made to this machine. It is so easy to adjust the Gibbs screws now that I have added tons of accuracy in locking things down. And I wish that I had realized this 15 years ago. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.